Hi there. Welcome to another episode of the Divine Design Podcast. I'm your host, Chrissy Morellis. Today, guys, the Lord has really laid this on my soul. We've done a podcast in the past about how to work the 12 steps. Now, the 12 steps is something put off by AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. But I want to dive a little bit deeper into the 12 steps because I want you to know that I am not a recovering drug addict or alcoholic, yet I work the 12 steps and it is changing my life. And I really, really feel you, you guys know if you've watched my podcast in the past that the Lord has laid it on my soul based on journaling, praying, and meditating to do this podcast. And as I continue to do this podcast, I'm kind of like, Lord, what are you doing? Like this, I sell real estate. I feel out of my element. I'm not real sure, but the more that I kind of go through this journey with him, the more that he shows me that, "Mm -mm, girl, I'm about to use you and I'm about to use you big time. And you're about to be a, a, a speaker, a center point for the Lord, meaning you may talk about things that are controversial and people may not like what you have to say. And I'm okay with that because now I know that this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm supposed to do for the Lord. And the more that I walk through the 12 steps, the, the more that I am being removed. I'm going down to my authentic self and I'm I don't care about me anymore. It's all about him. He is my boss. He is leading me. He is guiding me. He is navigating me. I am talking to him. I am asking him what my next steps are. This is different than where I've walked before in my life, meaning I have manifested a lot of my success. Now, I believe God has always been there with me for sure. And we'll talk about some of these things, evidentiary, how God is evidentiary and how he has shown me things throughout my life in other podcasts that I know that he is truly there with me based on things that I see, hear, feel, things of that nature. But here's what I want to do. God has really put it on my soul that I'm supposed to share with you my journey about the 12 steps and how I'm actually having a true connection, spiritual connection, connection with the Lord. This is not by me going to church. I'm not saying don't go to church, but this is not through organized religion. This is not me going to church every Sunday, sitting there, and then continuing to be the same person that I am day in, day out. I walk to the car. I'm talking about that person or that person or whatever that may be. Now, I've never really been somebody like that. I'm not a gossiper. That's not what fuels me. That's not what I'm about. I lift people up, always have. It's in my nature that's who God has made me. But this is what I want to share with you, that true connection. How do you do that? You have to do some work. God says, knock, and you will find. Basically, knock, seek, and you will find. And if you're willing to do that, you will find him if you really, really, really want to have a relationship with him. Do you want to hear God? Do you really want to hear him? Do you really want to have a relationship with him? He's going to take some work on your behalf. It's going to be changing some things about you that maybe you don't even know. There are things about you that you know that you probably don't like, but there's some things buried down in you as well that you may not even know is hindering you from being your true authentic self and having that true relationship with the Lord. Here's where I want to start very quickly. I want to read the 12 steps to you. If this is completely foreign to you, listen up. Because what I find is they should be teaching this in school. They should be teaching this somewhere. But you know why they're not? Because this, the 12 steps, makes you think for yourself. And just know, I believe organized religion, some of it anyways, they don't want you thinking for yourself. They want you to believe you're conditioned, what you've been conditioned, what you've been fed all your life and not to think for yourself. And I also believe the government's like that as well, at least at this point in time. You know, don't think for yourself. I don't know. I was talking to Tim and Tim was saying, do you know that Tim, he read some article, 10% of the people out there that actually read something on the internet 
read it in a newspaper, read it wherever they may get their information. They believe it to be true and correct, to be a fact. And you know what? I was talking to somebody else the other day. We were having the same conversation, and they were saying, huh, I truly believe it's more than that. This was a teacher. And she said, based on the students and whatnot, I know for a fact they read the first thing and think it to be true and fact. So I think it is very interesting what we, the world we live in today, and that really we should be checking ourselves, our information all the time. You should be asking yourself, do you believe in that? Do you believe in that article? Maybe I should research a little bit more. I'm not going to say it's fact unless I go check it and make sure that it is. I mean, with all the information that we have today and the way that the media tries to skew things and that there's fake news, we all know there's fake news now, you need to be asking yourself questions and deciding for yourself what is true and what is not. So anyways, let's get into the 12 steps really quickly. I'm just going to read these. The 12 steps and their biblical comparison. Number one, We admitted we were powerless over addictions and compulsive behavior, that our lives had become unmanageable. Now look, the 12 steps, it's a process. You work these in order to live a true, authentic self. And the more that you do this, the more that you're able to have a relationship and a connection with God the way that he wants it to be. So the biblical comparison, I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Romans 7, 18. Step two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. For it is God who is at work in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Philippians 2.13. Step three, we made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Romans 12.1. Step four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Let us examine our ways and test them, and let us return to the Lord. Lamentations 340. Step five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 516. Step six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all of these defects of character. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. James 4.10. Step seven, we humbly asked him to remove all our shortcomings. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1.9. Step eight. We made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Luke 6.31. Step 9. We made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Therefore, if you're offering your gifts at the altar and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gifts there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Matthew 5, 23, 24, excuse me. (coughs) Step 10. We continue to take personal inventory. When we were wrong, promptly admitted it. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Step 11. We sought. Step 11 and 12 are probably, you have to do all the other work. But step 11 and 12 are are probably the most important steps to me now. Because they, those are the ones that you're actually building a relationship with the Lord. And if you get silent enough through prayer, journaling, and meditation, you will hear him. It is fucking amazing. And yeah, guys, I cuss. We all know that. It is, I don't know any other way to describe it 
other than putting that adjective, verb, whatever you call it, in front of there, it is fucking unbelievable. It's stinking phenomenal. Like, everybody should walk this way. Everybody should want this for their lives. And you know what I think the difference is or why people are not doing this? Because you don't know about it. That's what I'm starting to think. And even if you did know about it, would you work this process? If you saw how freeing it truly is, how people are changing their lives and freeing and actually having a relationship with the Lord where they actually hear them, I don't know. I just think now, I don't want anything else for my life. I can't imagine living any other way. That's why I'm so dead set on getting this message out. But it's not just me. I know it's the Lord giving this to me now as well. Go and child, this is what you're to do. You're to push this 12 steps mainstream. You're to get this out. People, if they want a relationship with the Lord, this is the way to do it. Step 11. We sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Let the word of Christ dwell in you rich, richly. Colossians 3.16. Step 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore them gently, but watch yourself, or you may also be tempted. Galatians 6.1. Okay, so those are the 12 steps. And you can see this is actually a blueprint or instructions on how to have a true relationship with the Lord. They're right here, guys. Are you going to do it? Would you do it? Do you want to have a relationship with him? I don't know. Maybe you start there. Is your life unmanageable? Do you know, not know what's up or down? Do you lie, but you lie to yourself so you don't even really know that you're lying to other people? Are you double-minded? I mean, I think about all these things about who people are, and do they really want to change their lives? Do you want to live your best life? I fucking do. I will. I am. I am. It's taken me two and a half years since Steve passed away to realize what my true priorities are, what I want out of this life. What do I want to leave? What is my purpose? God, put me into your will for my life. Because look, I've manifested and I've done things and I've made plans and I've done all this and I've done well. Don't get me wrong. I've definitely done well, but I don't care about that anymore. You know, being number one ranked agent, I don't care about that. Can you believe this? Guys, anybody that's a realtor that knows me and follows me, can you believe I'm saying this? This isn't me. This is him. This is him removing character defects from me. He's going to leave the ones that are that need to be there, my ballsy, outspoken, living boldly and unapologetically. He's going to leave that shit there. He's going to leave it for him so that I go out there and speak this message and bring more people to the Lord because here's what I want. I want you to have a relationship with him. This is unbelievable. I mean, as I continue to progress and go through my journey, you're going to see because we're getting ready to see what the Lord's going to do and where he's going to put me because he's working on this. He's already started to remove people out of my life and bringing the people into my life and aligning everything. It's unbelievable. The people that are coming into my life and we're getting into alignment. Not only that, I know it. I know the Lord's bringing them, but not only that, they know it. They know it too because you know why? They're walking this way as well. So to me, it's just so, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited about the future. Um, I'm so excited what God does, what he shows me, uh, what he's going to do in this team, what he's going to do with the people on this team, what he's going to do with the next chapter of my life. Look, I'll always be in real estate, but he's getting ready to shake it up and do something else. 
So there's the 12 steps. It's a process. It has to be worked. You have to be truthful with yourself in order to go through this process, to look at people who have hurt you in your past, to make a list of who those people are, to actually pinpoint what happened, to actually go make amends to these people, to do things and to grow as a person and to grow spiritually, because that's what's happening here is I'm growing spiritually. But Here's what I want to talk about too, is how am I having this spiritual awakening? Yes, by working the 12 steps. Yes, by moving differently. Yes, by the Lord helping me to move differently. And I mean, navigate different in my, my, my life, say things differently, do things differently, respond differently than I have in the past. The process of meditating is truly where you get to know him and get to know him personally and intimately. Guys, I have visions. The Lord has blessed me. I have, I think I have a a myriad of spiritual gifts, but he gives me visions. So I will have visions about things. He also, through meditation and getting very, very still in my mind, will show me things, will talk to me. I may just ask a question, Lord, my situation, you know my situation about this. I need your help. I need you to give me the answer. I don't know, Lord. I don't know the answer. And so to sit there and to be silent, to actually ground myself, to shut up those idiots in my head, and to actually have a connection. You know what I visualize, guys? A connection. I know that I'm love and light. And it's very interesting because I uh, heard a well-renowned counselor in our area speak about the 12 steps last night. Actually, she is a beautiful soul. Man, I just tingled. She gave a beautiful presentation. And in that, she made a comment. She said, people are broken. Everybody is broken. But she said, you know what? But that's what allows God's light to be seen from other people. And I thought, what a beautiful statement. We're all broken. So think of a piece of pottery all broken or us and God's kind of piecing us together in our brokenness. And what happens is through those cracks, the light, your love and light shines out of that. And I thought, what a beautiful metaphor. How beautiful is that? So anyways, I'm glad I got to see that speaker presentation, but I know that I am love and light. So, but here's the thing. Here's what I visualize when I go into meditation, getting my mind super, super still, but then I see a direct connection to him, a direct line of light moving from my body, from my head, going up and actually sitting with him and conversing with him. It is amazing what he has given me. It is amazing some of the things I've seen, some of the things he's taught me about my own self. It's amazing. He wants to be in relationship with us, but you got to do the work. You got to do the work. You got to want him. You got to seek him. And this has to be almost like even if you can't do it daily, then do it once a week. Work to twice a week where you sit in meditation. You're praying, you're journaling. I'm going to tell you one other thing about the power of journaling. So, you know, you guys know that I go to Recovery Road and this is, it is a place uh, to heal your hurts, hangups, and habits, really. And it is a place for mostly recovering drug addicts and alcoholics. But I think now, you know, this is more about life recovery. So anybody can go learn how to do this. But throughout this process, know that I'm there, that there is a girl in the group that asked me to sponsor her. And so I'm sponsoring her the best that I can. Somebody sponsored me. So how I learned is kind of how I sponsor back. I know that I can always improve in that and I will. 
But as we get into small group, because no, that's where all the healing is done in small groups. So you're going to go into a small group with women and the men go into a small group where they actually start talking about their week or their situations or really what, why they're under distress or whatever it may be, or maybe not. Maybe they're happy as can be and they're going to share that. But I walked in one day and made everybody do an exercise. There is a doll of a, of a, woman there that actually brought a box of all these spirals that are sitting at the back of the room. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab those spirals enough for small group, the girls and bring pins. And we're going to do an exercise. We talk about the power of praying, journaling and meditating. But yet, I don't know how many people are actually doing this for themselves. So I thought, let's do a little exercise. Let's just get into the act of actually journaling. And I told him, hey, for the next three minutes, I timed it on my cell phone. For the next three minutes, I want you guys to write. I want you to think about what is your biggest struggle this week. I want you to write about what you think about it. And I want you to write about how you feel about it. Because those are two different things. What you think about this problem and then how you feel about it. And so for three minutes, they wrote. And so when we were done, I asked everybody, hey, just show me your spiral. In three minutes, I want to see how much people wrote or didn't write. Turned it over, and majority of the people had written almost to the bottom of the page in three minutes. Okay. And then one of them said, oh, 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 are we going to share this? And I said, no, we're not going to share And they're like, well, what was the exercise for? And I said, it's the power of being able to journal. Three minutes of your life, you were able to write a full page. And somebody goes, no, 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 I want to share. And I said, well, let's take a vote. Everybody wanted to share. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. Let's share. So everybody went around the room and read what their struggle was, what they thought about it, and how they felt. Guys, this is powerful. Listen up. Every single girl in that room solved their problem. They solved their problem themselves through writing. There is a power in journaling and writing things down. If you don't know the answers, and it could be to anything. I had a fight with my son. I don't know how to, you know, navigate through that. What do I do now? You know what? Write it down. Here's what happened. Here's what, how I think about it and here's how I feel about it. You may come up with your own solution and I'm not sure if the Lord wasn't working. I have to think the Lord was working in that room for all these girls. Now, the one girl that didn't really, there was one person that didn't solve their problem, but you know what they did? They had actually brought their spiral and showed that they were journaling and that person has actually grown so much in the last couple weeks. I'm so proud of that girl. People, we all have a little piece of God in us, whether you know that or not, or you recognize he's there. You can deny him if you want. It's your prerogative, but he is there. So I say, get in fellowship with him. He, I mean, like I said, it's changing my life the way I do things. Man, I've got more peace in my life. I thought I had peace before. Man, I didn't have peace. I have a a peace in my life that I, it's, 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 I can't even understand it. But that's what the Lord gives you. Happiness, joy, loving myself. I thought I loved myself before. I loved myself conditionally. I'm starting really to love myself I'm starting to work on things about myself that I thought I'd never be able to remove, that I would just, you know, that's just who I was. It's not who I am. We are so conditioned in our thinking. We are so conditioned. We don't think about things the way that we need to just authentically ourselves to solve our own problems or our own struggles and strives inside our own selves. But I thought this was interesting I watched a show yesterday on YouTube about near-death experiences. I don't know. I just love watching them. I love these people's stories. I love how they come out from these near-death experiences and that they are changed. They see the world so much differently, and now they know what their true purpose is, and they know that 
what they're to do in this lifetime. How freeing and powerful is that? But I thought this was interesting. This guy's name was Vinnie Todd Tolman. And something about his story just completely struck a chord with me. And I think it's because everything that the 12-step teaches you, this guy was running around up experiences, near-death experience, and learned 10 principles. He said he learned so much more, but that these were the 10 principles that he took away. And I thought, oh my God, this is so much like the 12 steps. And not only that, it's what I'm doing right now to have a spiritual awakening and a connection. I've already spiritually awaked. So it's really about having my spiritual connection with the Lord. But I thought this was interesting. Number one, so remember, these are his 10 principles to live his best life, to be in commune with God. Number one, be authentic. To be truly who you are. To accept who you are, all of your weaknesses and your strengths. But I thought this was interesting. This is number one, be authentic. So the 12 steps helps you to really be your true, authentic self, to help discover, self-discover, and then to peel the layers of the onion back to deal with, because God gives you only so much you can handle, right? So he'll give you one thing to work on, and then he'll give me another thought, like, holy crap, I didn't even remember that. He showed me when I was a little girl, something happened, and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even remember that. But he showed me that because that's the next step. Okay, I know I need to work on that. What did I think about that? How did that make me feel? Lord, what do I need to learn about that? Why are you showing me that? So I go to him about it in praying, journaling, and meditating. Number two, the reason we are here to learn, to create, to embody love, and to be in meaningful relationships. So it's to learn. This is the reason why we're here is to learn. We're having experiences. Do you believe in reincarnation? Do you believe that you've been here before? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I'm going to let you know, God let me know, one of my past lives. I would have never guessed that, but he kept on implanting something in me that I kind of, you know, a thought. I'm like, where is this coming from? That I had to pray, journal, meditate on it. I meditated on it twice, and then he finally gave me, this is who you were in your past life. And I know it. I know in everything in my being, and that's the thing about walking with God. You just know when you know, you know. You just know. And I know it's truth. Not making this shit up. It's truth. All right. So that's the reason we're here, to learn, to grow, to create, to embody love, and to be in meaningful relationships. Number three, to love unconditionally to love yourself. Now, remember guys, you got to love yourself unconditionally in order to truly love people. If not, then you're loving yourself conditionally and you're loving everybody else conditionally. So like I said, this segues with the 12 steps so much. So love, this is all about love. This life is all about love. Number four, to listen to your inner voice, to listen to your gut, to listen to your soul with him. He will give you everything that you need, but it's to listen to your inner voice. It says the built-in conscious or direction that God gave us, that truly this is our holy temple. We need to listen more to our gut, our feelings, our intuition, and we need to move on that. Number five, he talked about technology that truly we need to use it responsibly. and We need to make sure that we are controlling technology because it is such a distraction and we all know this. I mean, I've even said in a prior podcast that, you know, I could say I'm addicted to this, this thing right here, but it's a distraction, guys. Make sure that you're keeping your mind on the right things. Number six, to release prejudices. And I thought it was interesting about his story because he was saying, you know, I'm not a prejudiced person, but he had to release all prejudices, even the thought of somebody not being prejudiced or prejudice. And I thought that was very interesting. 
He says, all creation is divine, no matter what. Number seven, exercise the power of creation. And it begins with our thoughts. We are what we think about. And I believe that the Lord does implant things. His plan, he, he will give you his plan for your life. But that we are creative beings. What we think about is so powerful that, yes, like I said, even I can manifest on my own. The universe will give me. He talked about the law of attraction, which I thought was interesting. He said, I used to believe in the law of attraction. I'm not so sure what I think about the law of attraction now. But our thoughts are so powerful. Number eight, avoid negative influences at all costs, meaning toxic relationships, anything toxic, negativity that you tell yourself in your own mind to remove negativity. Number nine, understand the purpose to the light. So to me, is just understanding love. You know, you have to have evil to have good. You have to have, you know, light to have dark. But to be able to understand the purpose and know that the world is evil, that evil is real. Number 10, to know that we're all one, that we're all connected. So if you follow me at all and you've listened to previous podcasts, I've talked about all these things in the past. And I just thought it was interesting because I really wanted to share, like at this time, I wanted to read the 12 steps, but I wanted to show you how to really have a true connection with God. And it is working the 12 steps. So, and I thought it was so interesting because this guy's principles by having his near death experience is basically working the 12 steps you know, then some, he doesn't give you a roadmap, but he says, here are my principles. And so look, guys, I want you to live your best life. I truly, truly do. I want everybody to be happy, to be joyous, to be free, to truly have peace in their soul and to truly have a true connection with the Lord. I mean, this is unbelievable. I mean, I don't even know how to say that. I know I've said that again and again, but this ain't no bullshit. I mean, I I just don't even know how to express it. I'm going to do some other podcasts where I'm probably going to give you a little bit more like here are the true steps to work and how, how you need to think about that in order to have this true relationship. But guys, I'm going to tell you, if you would just pray, if you would journal and you would meditate, yes, you need to get down to the nitty gritty of yourself and be true and authentic and live truthfully in everything that you do. But even if you didn't, I think the Lord would still show up for you through meditation. And man, what I've, I've experienced is just, man, it's freedom. It's freedom. It is freeing. I wish I would have learned this a long time ago instead of the age that I am now. But at least I can take this moving forward and teach people this and, you know, and hope and pray that people, this will resonate and people will want to live this life in order to have a true relationship with him. Man, it's fucking phenomenal. That's all I can say about that. Guys, if you like the content that I'm bringing, please subscribe. Please like this page. Please click the little notification button. And I like to chat with you. Like, if you believe what I'm saying, let me know. If you don't believe what I'm saying, let me know. Just go ahead and comment and let me know because I'd love to see what you guys truly think about this. If there's something that you want to know in regards to this podcast that maybe I could elaborate on or you'd like to know a little bit further in depth, let me know what that is too. Because I want to make sure that you guys are getting what you need as well. All right, guys, I love spending time with y'all. Thank you for being here. Peace, love, respect. Until next time, guys, y'all have a great one.